archery lessons for students uh, in gardening. And then lastly, Special Olympics, the board, you're so gracious in supporting our Special Olympic winter games and summer games that our students participate in. But those are the students that we're getting ready for the winter games held in the state of January. And then lastly, we wouldn't be a great big emphasis on literacy in all of our programs. change. As we sit with students and resolve conflict and help to uh, solve problems, work through behaviors, 
feel the hurt, talk about things, we know that we are we are making an impact so when they go on to have healthy relationships, hopefully, with their children and families, that we are really trying to make that generational impact with the practices that we're putting in place in the program. And of course, they're participating um, in our Promoting Positive School Climate Project. And what I want to say about this is we have been so successful at taking unique situations and putting them in place through the project that our three programs have implemented with over 80% from the Fidelity, their PBIS programs, which tells us that this can be applicable in almost any setting that we're able to successfully do it in these three big treatment programs. And with that, I'm gonna hand it off to Steve. Thank you, Terry. Dr. Hagel, Board of Education, community members, thanks for allowing us to present tonight. So one of the things that they teach us in public speaking is to never start our slides with a data set. So Sherry had the excitement of including videos and some jokes, and I get to start with the data set with you. <laughs> so let's take a look at some data trend of here. So what this chart indicates is what our special education count has been from 2000 to 2018. So this is the Michigan Department of Education's audited count for special education students within Genesee County. And you see as our most current 18-19 school year, we have 9,397 students with disabilities within Genesee County that we support too. On top of this, one of the questions are asked, what does this look like from year to year? Because we see a, a dip in terms of the number of students with disabilities. And what we've seen with this has been proportionally following our enrollment trend across the county for our overall students. So for example, back in the 11th 12th school year, we had about 13.8% of our students across the county that were represented across in terms of students with disabilities. And currently we're at 14.2% with it. So we've been within the 13.5 to 14.5% range within the past 20 years within our county. And that's a uh, number that we take a look at consistently to be able to determine the use of effective practices within our school districts. Our next piece that we need to highlight is the related services that we provide to our constituent districts. And we do have some support staff here tonight that help within this role. So support staff, if you could stand up with your occupational therapist, physical therapist, teacher consultant, nurses, we'd like to recognize you tonight. I know we have more people than this, classroom <laughs> teachers. <laughs> yeah. um, occupational therapists may be helping students with fine motor development. We have support staff that helps with things goes learn from physical therapy services. It also helps students be able to be provided high quality curriculum through specially designed instructions to be able to learn to read Braille. That's a very specialized skill set that our staff are able to teach students to be able to do that. Maybe they need to be able to learn how to navigate through a school hallway, for example, to be able to utilize a cane to locate objects so they're not running into things in the hallways. Those are very specialized skill sets that our orientation mobility specialists help our students to learn that skill so they can access our school environment. We have literacy support. We have supports for assistive technology for our students with disabilities and health-related supports as well. And then finally, we do provide a classroom teacher to our McLaren um, Behavioral Health Center for our first life day treatment program as well. So that when students are um, placed there, they're in receipt of instruction support services and coordination with their, uh, their uh, school district that they're being sent services uh, from. Next, when we take a look at communication, our special education support staff isn't complete without our office and clerical support staff. So here we see a picture of our clerical support staff on the left that helps make the day-to-day -day activities take place. And we communicate with our whole staff through a process called weekly lineup. And they receive a newsletter uh, for that weekly lineup too. We discuss in terms of what needs do we have within the office during a specific week, professional developments that are coming up, what communication points do we have from the superintendent, and then usually end up with the final poll of the week to be able to inspire them to go off and make a difference for our students within the county. You see a few examples of some wild card that they're doing in terms of staff being recognized. I know that the Board of Education was also recognized the tape a couple months ago, and we also have a tape that's being passed around from member to member within our special education services. Uh, we also provide a regulatory function in coordination with the Michigan Department of Education. So one of those regulatory functions is to be able to coordinate programs and services for our 21 school districts and 15 public school academies within Genesee County. And that includes the supervision of center-based programs, as Sherry spoke about a little bit earlier, coordination of federal grants, 
We utilize an electronic based IEP process through uh, Easy Ed, IEP or Ed Plan. We coordinate uh, education and human service agencies to be able to work together in terms of an interconnected system framework working with Genesee Health Systems as an example. Uh, we collect student data. We end up providing technical assistance to local districts. And then also coordinate Medicaid uh, school-based services all of our offices as well. And then finally, really serving as a liaison between the Michigan Department of Education. We have an example up there in terms of early intervening services, but it's across the board as well. A few other components in terms of regulatory functions is the mandatory plan for special education. We do have a continuous improvement and monitoring system in which we take a look at district targets and help support them to be able to increase the amount of time that students may be receiving support in the general education environment as one example, or increasing behavioral supports for students that may have some struggles within that area. We provide technical assistance to our districts and public school academies through that monitoring function. And then we also coordinate with the Michigan Department of Education on a project called the Statewide Autism Resource and Training Project. So we bring in many staff members, not just within Genesee County, but within Livingston, Livingston County too, to be able to receive training through our STAR grant. And then finally, our administrative support to the Parent Advisory Committee is also a liaison in terms of communication group with our parents within the community and the Michigan Department of Education. Leadership, as you know, is one of our central pillars of this organization. And we couldn't do that without our Genesee County Association of Special Education Administrators. So monthly, this representative group of the 21 constituent districts and the 15 public school academies come together and work on some targeted areas in terms of improvement for our students within the county. Our focus for this year has been specially designed instruction, IT development, and then literacy series to be able to increase high quality literacy instruction for our students that may need additional support within the area of reading. We have our monthly meetings. Uh, we have a community structure in terms of breaking down from rules to finance to center-based program guidelines so that we are continuously on the same page providing that leadership and coaching and professional development both that, but that group and to our colleagues in terms of what their needs are as well. Uh, here's a fun picture. We had our happiness advantage training uh, this fall and our special education administrators have gone through that and end up coming up with some focused work within that group as well. December 31st, I was at home when we recognized that as being New Year's Eve, right? And I kept getting these notifications on my phone, blink, blink, blink. And I thought that someone was wishing me a happy New Year, right? <laughs> and it wasn't. I was surprised when I opened up my email we received 69 notification of local buildings within our county that are participating in the Promoting Positive School Climate Project. That was the best New Year's present that I could receive over all there. So we impact over 26,000 students within Genesee County. And when we take a look at the breakdown of our buildings, they're identified as the bronze, silver, and gold. We had 32 districts that were recognized as a bronze status, 21 silver, 16 gold, and for a total of 69 total buildings within the county that are recognized for their implementation of positive behavior support and services. We also had three buildings, that you see on the left-hand side here, in terms of receiving a bronze recognition in literacy. So Gaines Elementary and Swartz Creek, Cyrene Elementary and Swartz Creek, and Pierce Elementary and Flint Community Schools also received bronze status for the area of literacy development. That's exciting news. Our services are wide and far within special education services, from early on to transition services, from our project choice classrooms to our students that are being in receipt of related support services within our constituent district. We have a few examples of some pictures in terms of that wide reach across the county, and we're fortunate to be able to have the ability to impact students day in, day out within our Genesee County schools. And we truly are better together. I want to highlight some of our administrative support staff, which uh, has been in attendance tonight. So we have uh, ECPS principal, Ms. Gary Pope. Gary, good evening. Stand up. Thank you. Uh, we have EKLC principal, Ms. Marianne Skanda. And supporting her is Ms. Jan Cox, who's our assistant principal. We're familiar with Ms. Sue O'Brien. Hey, Sue. <laughs> Transition Center, Paula, Paula Greenwood, I saw here tonight, too. And then we have a few of our other support uh, staff and principals all on assignment tonight working on some 
other um, work. So Ms. Barbara Bennett is uh, working tonight as well as Ms. Nicole Jason as well. So we truly are better together, providing the highest quality programming services for students with disabilities within the Genesee Area School District. So we would entertain any questions from the Board of Education at this time if you so have any. Yeah, thank you. It was a great report. Bring us up to date. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Any other board members? Thank you. Thank you. Good for motion to receive the report. Move on. Board been supported all over the state. Aye. Aye. Opposed. Good report. Through countywide telephone service with the board. Did you turn in the RFP that we had put out on December 13th for a new countywide telephone service? And we have received three bids, one from Windstream Communications, one from Tioma, and one from Verizon Communications. The low bid was from Windstream. That's who we've been using for about the last 20 years. The cost is $17,289.77 a month. We are recommending to continue uh, with Windstream Communications for the county at $17,289.77 a month. This was previously approved at the Superintendent's Association uh, for approval, and we are asking the board to approve that. Okay. The President of the Finance Committee met prior to the meeting this evening and reviewed all the good, good discussion. We concur with the administration's recommendation of so forth. Who can support it in the county? All of the things. Take the approved special education for the award. Again, in front of you, you have a bid for special education furniture. This furniture will be used over at the special education north building once we do a relocation of um, buildings and the Center for Countywide Program moves over to their new location. It will be combined with the early on furniture when the Center for Countywide Program moves their furniture. When we put the bid out on February 4th, we received three bids for the special education furniture, one from NBS um, Commercial, one from, from School Specialty, and one from HPS. The low bid was from HPS in Middleville, Michigan for $160,115. Uh, we are recommending the low bid at $160,115 for approval. Again, yeah, Mr. President, the Finance Committee concurs with the administration and we would so move to work. Who can support it in discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Next is approved. Davis got approved for a new bid award. And the final uh, bid was put out for conference room furniture. And that goes with the renovation of conference rooms 101, 102A, and B. We received four bids on those conference room furniture, one from Holland, desk and chair, one from NDS, one from school specialty, and one from HPS. We are recommending the low bid from HPS in Middleville, Michigan, that was compliant at $31,537 for all three of those conference rooms. Mr. President, again, we uh, reviewed that in and the Finance Committee meeting, and I would move the approval of support. Who's in support of any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Yes. Next is received bids for the cosmetology buildings, exterior renovation. We have two buildings uh, that are separate from the main <coughs> building at the front of the Genesee Career Institute that house our uh, salon and a classroom for cosmetology. The, the both of those buildings were built several years ago and are in need of uh, exterior work, including step handrails, new exterior block, uh, attic insulation, and also we asked for an alternate bid for crawl space insulation. We did go out to bid. We received two compliant bids: one from ENL Construction and one from Wobig Construction. ENL uh, the base bid was one hundred thirty-one thousand plus the alternate of one thousand six hundred fifty dollars for a total bid package of $132,650 from e and Construction out of Flint, Michigan. And we would uh, so recommend that the board approve, approve that tonight. Mr. President, we need to build the ground for you. It's a motion to support it. We need support it all of the Aye. 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 Oh, <laughs> Next is received bid for the exterior door replacement project at the very end of the Krause Construction 
the Marion Krause Instructional Center is in need of exterior door replacements. Uh, we did go out to bid approximately a year ago on this project, and at that time we only received one compliant bid at around $265,000. This year we received several compliant bids, uh, seven of them, <coughs> and we uh, were able to obtain a much better price this year from FDH Architecture at $211,000. This does include all exterior doors and all hardware and frames for those doors as well. And we are recommending that the board approve our working with FBH architecture out of commission. Well, Mr. President. 
So did Genesee Career Institute students fill the prescription list? And we are asking the board to allow our future farmers of America club to participate in the state environment fund competition at the student camp and relocation at Lake Superior State. Um, the students will travel up there in May, between May 18th and the 20th. Um, they'll also receive six articulated credits to Michigan State University for their participation. Um, the teacher will be able to drive them up in the CCI van to stay with the students in that competition up there. It'll cost $186 per student in their fundraising to um, cover that. And the uh, GCI CTSO fund will cover what they can. So we are recommending that you allow them to participate in that competition. So <laughs> any discussion? I just don't want to remember the Genesee Career Institute to, when they were serving some salads and stuff we're talking about other students. And they are really proud of being part of that program and what's happening over there. So they're really excited about that. All those in favor? All right. All right. Accept donations to the high school district programs. So tonight we have some really unique donations um, to the Center for Countywide Programs, the Pediatric Public Health Initiative Group, with the NBA has donated 1,576 gift cards <coughs> at $25 each to every Head Start and Early Head Start family at a total donation of $39,400 to be spent at the Flint Farmers Market. To Elmernoff Learning Center, the Knights of Columbus has donated $106 to be used in any way that Elmernoff Learning Center would like for the students. At the Marion Krauss Instructional Family, we have a number of donations from families. Um, from Tanya, and Tanya Bailey, $150. From Kathy Bell, $15. Paula Bolt, $10. From Lori and Ron Eastwood, $20. From Aaron and Cindy Galales, $50. From Carla and Brian Harris, $10. From Michael and Jennifer Hodges, $30. From the Home Depot store, $60. From Jill and David Jackson, $25. From the Knights of Columbus, Father Gauthier, $106. From Deb Marine, $100. From Lori and Mark Newton, $60. From Sydney Pathwood, $20. From Nancy Putney, care of family and friends of Jacob Crutchfield, $1,120. From Spanish Army Tax, $5. Charlie and Rose Richards, $50. From Julian David Salem, $20. From Amanda Schinnenbarger, $40.27. From Todd and Jessica Slater, $30. From Sherry, from Sherry Talkanoff, $45. From Jenny Thompson, $50. From Carolyn Bearcorn, $100. From Cindy Wagner, $20. From Daniel and Jamie Whitman, $20. From Amy Wilson, $8. From Bar Barbara and Orlando Wilson, $15. For a total of $2,058.27. <coughs> all going towards holiday baskets during, during the holidays to make food baskets for families. So $2,058.27. All for MCIC uh, families during the holidays. From yeah. MCIC staff, families to me. Yeah, it's uh, amazing how the community steps up and supports the students of uh, Genesee County and uh, ensuring that they have good holidays and uh, whatever else they're ever need. So. so we'll get letters out immediately expressing our security for that generosity. Yeah, more. So more. Support. We've been supportive of any discussion. All those in favor? Aye. <coughs> All those in favor? Sure. Next for information, if any way of that information from the board. Any comments? Nothing. Legislative committee. I think the board's aware that uh, Governor Whitmer did unveil her budget proposal last week. Um, we did for the second year in a row. She's unveiled a, a weighted formula that recognizes the additional needs, uh, particularly for students with disabilities or students living in poverty, English language learners, and a weighted formula, which obviously we have supported uh, as, a, as a group of superintendents and districts in our county. Um, but of course, this is a first step in a long process for the budget. It's also important to know that the 
governor has uh, recommended an increase in funding for early childhood and an increase in slots, uh, particularly in Flint uh, as well. Um, there's some documents in your folder. The first thing I put in the folder, Saturday we're opening the ISD for families who would like some assistance in completing FAFSA forms for their uh, high school students, particularly anybody going off to college immediately. So you have that. And we have given you the junior ROTC students accomplishments you know, compiled there. Our students have really done some amazing things. Michael Crawford from GC, GCI has been named the Michigan Teacher, was the Teacher of the Month for the Graphic Communications Education Association across Michigan. So he does a lot of great things for the students and their society, but he's been you know, lifted up this month really across the state. I also gave you um, these two documents that are really kind of noteworthy and I wanted to draw your attention to a couple things that are important right now. <clears throat> so if you look at those for a minute, the first one is the inequitable value of one mil across the state of Michigan. And the second one is labeled special education millages across the state of Michigan. So if you just look at the first one, that the title is the inequitable value of one mil. There's copies of these in the back of the room for anybody that would like to look at them. It shows the counties in Michigan and what one mill of tax dollars generates in every county of Michigan. So for example, in Charlevoix County, a tax revenue of one mill would generate $633. In Genesis County, a tax of one mil generates one hundred and fifty-four dollars. So it's very, it's different depending on where you live and how much one mil would generate. So people, are, you know, when everybody's trying to make these comparisons about how much special ed would generate, how much folk ed would generate, and how much tax dollars are generated by mill, it's not the same, one mill compared to one mill. It depends on where you live and what people are doing <coughs> in certain places. So um, this is a really good comparison for everybody. But the second document is what special education mills would generate. So if you look at the second document, at the top, the Huron County, right under Huron County, the Huron County generates $2,013 per mill. The second one is Washtenaw County. Washtenaw County generates $1,800 per mill. They're at the top. If you look down towards the bottom of those, you're going to see Lapeer, Sanilac, Rock Common, not too far as Genesee County. Our tax dollars don't go very far. Our mills only generate three hundred and seventy one dollars per student. That's a far cry from two thousand dollars per mill that other towns can make. So these are based on two thousand eighteen tax So we can't hear you. We can't hear what she's saying. Well I'm talking to the board right now.
education ministry video. And so she's one of our little ones at MCIC. Well, you may be wondering why all of us are decked out in red today. It started with our morning crew this morning. We're Absolutely. keeping it going through the day. February is American Heart Month, and today is National Wear Red Day. The initiative is to bring awareness to a shocking statistic. Heart disease and stroke remain the number one killer of women, claiming one in three lives. As we raise awareness about heart health today, some of the most profound inspiration comes from the smallest among us. All new tonight, ABC Tulsa's Elise Rainey talks to a Genesee County family for some perspective. She just has a way of getting people to wrap them right around her finger. Jim McGonger's mom, Lindsay, describes her as a sassy spitfire that will make you melt. She doesn't talk and has some physical limitations, but she loves music and movies and certainly knows how to command attention, especially from her dad, Stephen. Don't laugh. Doctors noticed at 32 weeks that Gemma had hypoplastic left heart syndrome, or HLHS, making her one of 40,000 babies born with a congenital heart defect each year. Gemma had her first open heart surgery at just three days old. We always kind of kept it in perspective of there's a chance that she might need a transplant. That became even more apparent shortly after Gemma's second stage surgery. The surgery went well, but a couple of months later, at eight months old, she went into cardiac arrest. That was the first incident we really had where like, are we going to bring her home? Like, is that gonna happen? Gemma was later placed on a heart transplant waiting list where she stayed for four months before she received the transplant. That was around 15 months old. Now she's five and she's still getting used to her heart. It's a lot of balancing, a lot of work to make the body adjust to what you're asking it to do. We're still not out of the woods yet, but uh, she's, you know, she's doing well and just keeps growing. Steven, the local high school coach, says they've stayed together and tried to make the most of every moment. She's going to school now, um, she does therapy, um, I say now. She goes to, she had dance class last year. She goes to all of brothers, all of her brothers' um, sporting events, um, sporting my sporting events. events. The family credits a strong support system for helping them get through, and Lindsay even keeps a blog updating Gemma's progress. They're looking forward to traveling outside of Michigan with Gemma and their son Gavin, but they want other families to pay attention to this serious issue. It will happen to anybody. There needs to be more awareness and more research driven towards. Um, helping these doctors and these surgeons save these kids. And I think more than anything, we would really just like for families to never have to go through what we've been through. In Flushing, Elise Ramey, ABC 12 News. And you can take action and don't. And Sue, we say it every day. Your staff is just a bunch of angels. Thank you. Thank you. And finally, uh, last Friday, the Children's Champion Breakfast had a lot of award winners and we were pretty proud to um, have a, a book full of children's champions. So Mr. Ford was carrying award, carrying adult award nominee, um, Kristen Mays, Christina Lloyd, Joey Ramos, uh, the Genesee County Attack Force was a winner and he had um, that video for you. The Tenants Task Force is working to ensure that children in school are receiving a quick education on a daily basis. This task force collaborates with schools, community agencies, and other partners to address chronic absenteeism, fluency, and educational neglect. The Attendance Task Force has been serving Genesee County children and families for more than a decade. Because of their work, children served by the task force are less likely to be involved in the courts and more likely to achieve higher academic success. For all their work, the Genesee County Attendance Task Force is receiving the 2020 Exceptional Business Award.
choice. We had the Parents' Choice Award as Educare, and then the Educare Parent Ambassador is also a winner of the award. We have a quick video of that. <laughs> by a motivated team of empowered Flint parents who want to uplift and support other families raising young children in the Flint and Genesee County community. Though the group began as a parent-teacher organization in Decatur in Flint, they have ambitions to do more in the service of the entire community. Parent Ambassadors is a gathering of parent leaders helping to bridge the gap between home and school. This grassroots group volunteers together to fill immediate needs, including distribution of diapers, clothing, and shoes for Flint residents. Additionally, they plan and organize educational and advocacy-focused events for their parents. Parent ambassadors recently posted a screening and discussion of the No Small Matter film, which highlights the importance of high-quality early education. The group is working on legislative advocacy for early childhood and continuing their partnership with various groups, including the Lead Expansion Access Program Parent Advisory, for their admirable grassroots efforts and dedication to advocacy for all families. The Parent Ambassadors are the winners of the 2020 Volunteer Engagement to Serve Youth Award. Thank you. 
is there a file of the lawsuit? Um, is the DISD taking a position on that? Are you guys supporting the Flint schools? Or are you just going to let them go their own? Um, also, with uh, special education, I appreciate the work you guys are doing. It sounds very nice. Um, I have re heard report that maybe not all the kids are actually need special ed. Like maybe some of them just have trouble behaving. Um, I'm concerned about that. Um, also, with the middle colleges, um, I'm under the impression that the middle colleges are the way we should be going in Flint and Genesee County. Um, it seems kind of unfair that kids that go to Davison, Flint, Grand Blanc, a regular high school don't get college credit. Um, another issue is literacy. Um, it was nice that that special ed kid was pretty literate. Um, but we have a lot of other kids in, in Flint, Genesee County that aren't literate. Um, are we testing these kids? Like, um, we have a huge problem with literacy in Flint. Um, I'm sure even some of the other schools, like, what are we doing with that? Um, also education. I think we could do a better job of educating um, kids in these schools, like, in regards to how the political system works, like precinct delegates, our criminal justice system. I mean, even I, like, I paid attention to Davis in high school, I've been impacted in politics, and I just recently learned about the form you gotta fill out if you want your sentence and they commuted. There's a guy that's been in jail for like 40 years for a marijuana conviction. Um, another issue a lady mentioned it, I mentioned it last time. Is there any way we can get Michelle Benson to maybe get like a microphone in here? Um, I mean, I, uh, Jerry's pretty easy to hear, but Lisa's voice doesn't hear it as well. Um, so I think you guys should do that. Um, I think that's, that's pretty much anything, but I, I really wish you guys would update this on what's going on with the Flint schools. I think at the last meeting you mentioned you were going to um, present it to the boards, the boards of the other school districts. Uh, are, is that going to get picked, or, is, or do we have to wait on the lawsuit with that Flint is filed? Thank you. So, Adam, right? Yeah. Adam, Flint did not file a lawsuit. Flint filed an objection with the state of Michigan, and all that is is an objection to what's called a mandatory plan. A mandatory plan is a county-wide special education plan, and an objection is nothing like a lawsuit. And so the state has 30 days to appoint a hearing officer, which is literally a, it's like a formal hearing where they'll listen to a, a objection that Flint has to the mandatory plan. And then they listen to what the other school districts will say about the mandatory plan. Then the hearing officer will either say no to Flint's objection and stay the mandatory plan as it is, or they might offer another solution. Um, but it's not a lawsuit. Okay, thank you. Is there any other help on address the board? Yeah, state your name and address. Hi, uh, Dr. Joyce Ellis, Mike Mail at 4021 Greenbrook Line. Um, I just want to say a couple of my concerns, um, and I address some of that. Um, just for the public information, a kid that has behavior problems does not automatic, does not go into a uh, special ed. We have IEPs that we have to do. And that's more of a kid into special ed. It has nothing to do with the behavior. It's just a kid meet the criteria of an IEP. However, um, the community kids has an unusual behavior pattern, which I had met with some group earlier, and we spoke about that at the superintendent. That behavior that kids are experiencing is not the typical behavior of these kids. I've been in this system. I've opened up two schools. I've worked on 20 years. I put two to three hundred thousand dollars in this in the Flint community with these two schools. Spend over a hundred some thousand dollars every year. Learning for 14, 15 years. What I'm saying is that this the Flint water crisis has put this burden on the financial obligation of this whole system. What I'm also saying is that we are in a red alert. I know what I'm talking about. 
you have to come to sit with me and sit and hear what I'm saying. <coughs> Two, three million dollars wouldn't help that special ed go off to in China. We have to look at the finance, we have to look at the formula, we have to have people of color working with these kids to identify certain things that we can see. We need extra people to help with this. So when you say, uh, we just got kids with special ed, they call behavior, that's not true. It takes a process to get into special ed, to get into CI and EI. So, um, but it costs money to run these programs. One kid that I see sees about four or five different specialists in one day. And so we have to keep all this in mind. The Flint water crisis is why we're here. That's right. The Flint water crisis is why we're making a demand that that be changed. A report was put out, the mission got rated a B because of the formula. It does not address the need, not population. Kids are not child. We're not child. We're talking about the needs of the kids. So when we come back and we got to sit down and we got to talk about some stuff, let's come back with some good facts and let's look at the need. It's just the reading literacy. We have a program called SFA. And we're putting kids in the reading room where they can read for 90 minutes. I got, you got fourth and fifth grade, you got to go into a second grade reading room. And they fifth and sixth grade, but that's what SFA said. I got third and fourth grade back into the first grade, we call them wings, SFA. So we got to get these fourth grade to read at fourth grade level. Literacy is a problem around the board, compounded with the behavior of the water crisis. We just keep wanting to just put I don't know, a band-aid on it? They have a problem. And I don't know, we can't fix this, but we can look at the whole thing and sit down and have a group discussion. What will work best? Kicking a kid out 29 and 30 some days because of behavior when they just cannot cope no more than about 15 minutes? 15 minutes. So we got a lot of work to do that formally need to be changed. I don't know where to begin at Title I, we need to look at that money and maybe create some type of other space with that money within the school. And by the way, there's something else we need to talk about, but some of this stuff requires us to go back to the plant um, board. How did we get here? 2020, look at us. All this money came here, look at us. Them kids are not dogs. They're you. They're you. We talk about nothing when they come to them. Twenty-three million dollars and nothing. When it comes to the life of these kids that have to live when we gone. Because we don't always have, but they got to stay here. Thank you. Anyone else that can give that support? Good evening. My name is Leila McKee Harvey, 1309 for Bill And uh, I want to, I'm going to try and be really quick here. I really want to talk about, uh, first of all, the slideshow that you show. I've been here three times. And uh, I want to say they are really great slideshow as it relates to the work that you're doing in Genesee County. And as I look in the city of Flint and look at the different schools and the kids, there's such a big gap. And that's one of the reasons why we're here. So I was thinking about you doing a slideshow, and so I went home and said, how do I help them to understand what is taking place in Flint? And so I'm going to share that with you, okay? And I didn't want to be presumptuous in terms of you understanding all that took place, but I'm going to bring you up. So this is our slideshow, okay? I'm going to read it for you. As a citizen of Flint, I am not going to defend the small African-American and white babies by beginning my argument from the center of Flint's school demise. In doing so, it would be cheating our babies from the truth and giving you a falsified and flawed premise that allows you to continue to abuse statutes that harm innocent lives in the Flint public school system. All that we are fighting against today stems from segregation and social inequality in Flint. Since I made a mi migration to the first 
uh, segregated uh, state in America, which is the state of Michigan, and the third most segregated city in uh, Flint. There are all, there's always been a power struggle and two master plans for our municipal hall and our public schools. It was the presence of colored people that caused a well-functioning city and a school system to be vacated and years later for it to struggle financially with that infrastructure that was created for 200,000 people. In the 1960s, Flint and its school system was thrown, 50 schools and 50,000 students with more than 50 buildings. Yet the more that colored people migrated here, the more that white families moved to the outer counties. And those white families that stayed didn't have an issue with melanated people, nor were they or are they discriminative. Many of them stand with us today. Over the years, to regain control over a city that some whites abandoned and to grapple with an abandoned city and an infrastructure, including our Flint schools, two different and distinctive master plans have been executed. One has always been public and the other private. One has always staged clandestine leaders to fulfill the direction of its course. This was done with superintendents, county commissioners, city council, emergency managers, school board presidents, governors, and certain philanthropic organizations. In 2001, a Republican governor by the name of John Engler executed Act 18. Sitting in our city hall at the same time was an emergency manager by the name of Ed Kurtz and Donnell Early. Check the records. These two would come back to visit us 10 years later. Another Republican governor by the name of Richard Snyder chose these two again in 2011, despite neither having experience in finance. In 2013, under the office of emergency manager Ed Kurtz and Superintendent Larry Watkins, Act 18 was executed and the special education fund was moved to the outer town, DISD. Public schools lost about $2.1 million. I remind you, the county is comprised of many of the families that fled because of the color of our skin. How can you dismantle and regionalize a municipality and a public school system? You can move its assets by abuse of legal laws and statutes. You can also create an illegal pipeline that ultimately caused severe neurological disorders in the children in Flint, leaving it even more crippled. Between 2011 and 2017, under the auspices of Ed Kirk, Mike Brown, and Donnell Early, our local emergency managers, our special education dollars were moved to GISD, causing a significant drop of resources, not to mention GISD failing to take proper care of the children in need from the lead. Between 2011 and 2017, our great start to readiness program was also hijacked. A Republican governor named Richard Snyder and the same local emergency managers, Ed Kurtz and Mike Brown, was in City Hall. Our great start dollars were rerouted to churches and child care centers, reducing the enrollment for three and four year olds in public schools and paying the utilities and rent per square footage on private businesses instead of paying for the liabilities which the monies were intended for to play in public schools. Between 2011 and 2017, our babies was poisoned, in particular in 2014, and their ability to professionally read and write was maimed, causing a $20 million deficit because millions were transferred from the operating budget to pay for special education. In addition to this, because of a fraudulent pipeline scheme to ensure that the rich is even richer, our babies cannot pass certain tests. Therefore, the public school has to send back $16 million of Title I money, babies being punished for greed. The U of M was given a grant that also was to aid the babies and to test them. We had to track that money down only to find out a philanthropic organization had sat on that money for years while Flint has struggled to pay for the testing for our babies. All that I named has caused Flint Public Schools to see a 35% decrease in enrollment since 2014. Since the 60s, has gone from 50 schools to approximately 11 campuses, tenure and convoluted schemes continue to further dismantle our schools and municipal government. We are not mismanaging. We are being manipulated and dismantled by abusive statutes and laws. We are losing enrollment also because families who need special care are now driving their babies to the outer schools for aid, causing a further decrease in public school enrollment. I'm on the stairs. I consistently hear that many employees have stolen monies in the past, and that's why they shouldn't have money. I remind you, the little child who is in need of a book or counseling, I ask you, which man has stolen the most from him? The man in the t-shirt who steals from the teal or the man in the white collar shirt who uses laws and statutes Ooh, to make them legal. Right. In either scenario, the child doesn't have a book or a counselor. I am not saying any of you were the orchestrator of this master plan that has been brewing in our community for years. I'm saying your acts today make you complicit and I ask you to leave here and research everything that I have said. You have the authority to make right the schemes intended to dismantle our public schools. The answer is not some large organization sitting in the bush and watching for years and now proposing to build new schools, which ultimately they own. 
privatization, regionalization, and gentrification are the reasons that we are here. So I just wanted to say that. And I also want to just say that structural racism <coughs> that's happening in our community is when city and county and state have shared ideologies about what African Americans and impoverished whites can have, the level and expectancy of schools, where they can live and how much they can earn. It becomes systemic when it's passed down from cousins to generation to friends. That's when it becomes systemic. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Is there anyone else with you to the board? Insulting that 
the top is taken care of, but the people that are putting in their blood, sweat, and tears into it are not being taken care of in that same way. I've spoken to some of the teachers, some and some of these programs are making it as little as ten dollars an hour. And that's absolutely ridiculous when they are charged with taking care of the most precious resource in any community, which is our young people. They are the building blocks for what this community will become. And instead of spending this time arguing about who is right and who has the right to this $23 million, why aren't we sitting here and saying, let's just make sure our kids are taken care of it. First and foremost, let's make sure that they have the counselors that they need, that the teachers are supported, that the teachers aren't pulling from their already thin pocketbooks to make sure that their kids are taken care of in their classrooms. So we've talked about that $23 million in supplemental. If you have the ability to help out, let's, Let's just take away all the chaos, all of the garbage that's surrounding this, and let's just take care of the kids and those responsible for taking care of the kids, which is our educators. Let's make sure those people are taking care of worse before our administrators are. Again, thank you so much for this time to speak. And I want to just take the time to compliment your talk or your suit because that's all I've been taking this whole time. It looks great. <laughs> My name is Lathan Jefferson. My address is 2814. I understand what is part of what's happened. In my opinion, I'm probably lost. Uh, a lady by the name of Miss Baker. She worked at Flushing School. Well, she did her. paperwork for the entire on the internet. When she gets to Flushing School, she says, I'm here for my job. They said, well, that job for the film. She says, yeah, I mean. She works for a period of time. They ask her, says, are you coming to the party after school? Well, being a co-worker, uh, yeah, I guess I'll come. Well, it was a going away party for her. They paid her for the rent. Her last name was Payton, by the way. They paid for her for the rest of the year not to come to work. You understand what I'm saying? Miss Bacon's alpha American. They did not want a black teacher in Flushing to teach their kids education. You understand what I'm saying? There is a check that is written from here to Fix Photography, I think it is. Two checks for about over $30,000 a year to take the pictures in the school. And I said, well, why would they have to pay to take the kids' pictures? Why did each school just get a camera? Which I come to find out each school already has the camera for the kids' I think. So where is this money going? Maybe not this uh, meeting, but I'd like to know by the next one. So it's around $70,000, $100,000 being paid to kids' studios. For what? Well, it's not going to the kids' studios. Asking us that question? Yes. Yeah. Oh, the flushing schools? No, 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 not the flushing school. I know what happened to flushing, but this check that is written, written from here to Hick Studio twice a year. I don't want to exaggerate on the numbers, but it was very large. Is it still being written? The two checks. You don't believe that? Uh, the person that told me this is the person that prints out the checks. And it's not the person that's here now. Now, I watched the young man, which was uh, on the first part of the video, that says for uh, justice for all, I think is what that's not what happened here. And that gentleman is challenged. And he knows what's right and what's wrong. And what's happening here is not right. I realize some people may not want to do it with some people, but it's somewhere down the road, somebody's going to have to meet with somebody. But what's being done is not right. And the only thing that's going to happen with this problem is it's going to be a march. If somebody affected your children, poisoned them, not in this case, but when you get poisoned and you don't get help from it, parents get angry. I don't want to say angry. They get angry. It's above that. So 
should they stop asking or what should they do? They said it takes 20 people to be got a go-to or a decision on this. What they don't know and what you're telling them, there is no 20 people. It's here in the governor's office. Uh, the 1968 <laughs> Civil Rights Law, the fight should we have some people in here to no law. It said anything that affects the country capitalization, the federal civil rights violation. Thank you. Thank you. Jeff Morgan owns 
G E C S. I disagree with you. Okay, you can okay. disagree all you like. But you're, you're done. done. These oh, people. All right, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I see okay. I'm making uh, my statement. That's good. Right. He does own G E C S. And he was working with you as a superintendent, and you were the board president. And it's funny how he keeps on getting these contracts. It's funny how GISD took down the website for all the contracts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, I do have that in that fact. I do know that you took a trip on conference, and then when I looked at it, the website was taken down also. What are y'all really trying to hide? Mm -hmm. And then if Miss Hagel and the other ones, it's funny how 20,000 students left from 2009 to 2019, and we had four six-figure uh, people getting paid, and it went up to 20 plus. We declined in students, but we increased in six-figure seven. Mm -hmm. How is that even possible? But I thank y'all, because I know y'all are ready for me to get up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> My mayor posed this question to me a couple weeks ago. What does racism look like in 2020? Ms. Hagel, once again, your huffing is a middle school mean girl tactic. Your nasty, snide, disparaging, sarcastic, smearing response to one of Flint's staple residents is unnecessary. I've been called radical, 100, ignorant, a snitch, and some things that I can't mention, and some things that don't even remotely sound like my son and me. Told the KKK would find me ignorant to fight for the rights of others, but my social work degree says different. Right. And that's fine too. Citizen participation at the end again. But what you fail to realize is some of us on a regular attend Flint City Council meetings that go sometimes from 4 30 in the afternoon to 11 and 12 o'clock at night. It's called staying power. We ain't going nowhere. We get large. Flint is a family, which means we may not agree when we at home with each other all the time or most of the time. But when a stranger or what a stranger will not understand is that you will not take advantage and do things to take advantage of our babies and our special needs in this. So we bind together to fight against you and this what you have done as in done to the city of Flint. Let me stop by saying happy February everyone. It is black history. Don't mistake my pride in being a strong opinionated black woman for being anti-anything. I fight at the hands of right regardless of what shade and nationality you are. I don't care what religion you are or what lifestyle you live. It is my job to defend your right to do so. I let God handle the rest. Let's make it, let's make it clear. No race will ever understand the day-to-day -day struggle of an African American, but we appreciate the fight of others that fight along with us. And we will fight for those that it don't matter what shade or, or, or nationality you are. You won't understand the tears of an angry black woman cried, uh, the tears of an angry black woman cries when her son, husband, nephew, father is served with justice on the plate of rule. You won't understand the fear and mistrust that a black man has in, the head, in his head, heart, and stomach when he just has to walk past a police officer. One month of 28 days or sometimes 29 given to African Americans to celebrate accomplishments that were made on the back of African Americans to make this country great from, from the beginning to begin with. And then the majority, the majority lawmakers think they have done something to curb by giving African Americans days on the calendar to celebrate in hopes that we forget most of those that came before Martin Rosa and Malcolm. In my opinion, Part of the problem is African Americans used to just agree with and not say anything about what was said and done to them and just try to disappear and not make a record. This new age African American, we're not buying it and we're not going nowhere. 
My question is, what does racism look like in 2020? Does it look like holding the money from predominantly African-American community and giving more to the white community or six-figure salary? Happy February, everyone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Take your name and address for the rest of them. Anthony Palladino, 1367, Washington Avenue, all of these sites, man. Um, last time this year, I kind of got a little fuzzy on you guys, but see, I'd like to say that's a hard act to follow, but that's for real. These are for real people from the city of Flint and around us. I'd like to say to you, man, don't ever disrespect. This is Jefferson like that again. Yeah. Right. That woman was rolled on a bus. That's right. And you see my color? There ain't no color amongst us. We may talk about it. We may not even get along. Mm -hmm. That's it. But if you mess with yeah. one, you're messing with all of us. That's it. Yeah. And she's right. We don't get to speak at the council. I got four more minutes to do this. I had to run for, I had to run for the mayor of Flint so I can be heard without having to yell and scream. And I'm not picking on you. You're overpaid. Let's be honest. Mm -hmm. I want to address something else. Now, you mentioned Potter School. My granddaughter I told you last time I was here, I got upset because she was really, really struggling. She was born in 2009. 2014, that water disaster hit us. She has not been right since she died. She's struggling. Turn your head. If that was your kid, you wouldn't. But I'm telling you right now, this is my granddaughter. Take two, because you need it. Here's where I'm at. I don't need to be rude. My granddaughter is dying right in front of my face. And you look at our hair, and you look at our bodies, and our, our, our temperaments. You'll never disrespect Flint. If it wasn't for Flint, you guys wouldn't even be here. There you go. Right. Right. You know what I'm saying? Let's be honest. Let's talk about GM and how you guys stroke the system back then with your older family. Black, red, white, or green, it didn't matter. We may play different music. We may not always get along. When you take one down, you're going to take us all down. You know that because you're part of it too. So without getting out of camp, part of school, took my granddaughter in, nothing but trouble, no matter what she did. So now I tried to get her over to the peer school, you know, the college cultural center. Because I'm on this side of it. Nothing but more trouble. But you know what? The principal said, we're only here so we can be tired. They had a special ed lady in there. I can't remember her name, but we told someone. She had taken all these kids and, and started helping them. They fired her. Guess who was part of her kids? My granddaughter. She fell apart. So guess what? Mr. Caladino, my son, you got to move your daughter and granddaughter out of the school. Well, what are we going to do? She's up in trouble. And I'm going to say this right now. She ended up at Doyle Ryder. Thank God for Doyle Ryder School. Predominantly black. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? See, what Leah was explaining to you was how as the black poor got annihilated, there was the white poor, my mother on her own raising six kids on the low knees side of the And she didn't care what color you were. You were coming in our house and we were going to feed you and it matter. So that's what you guys are missing here. Yeah, it's not a color thing. I think you guys are afraid we're going to get along. Isn't that what it's going to be about all along? I may not agree with the pastors. I may not be. Mom, but look, man. We do not hate each other. We do not hate each other. I got on the bus, drove all the way to Washington, and I say, ah, we. My granddaughter is right in my face, dying. So guess where she's at now? She's at Benton. Benton. My kid graduated from the Anyways. They're doing some things well, but it's still not right. It's still not right. You can put all the videos up there that you want, but I noticed one thing. I didn't see one video from Flint. And I was the reason why, look, when you got good, you gotta have good because you got bad. And if you're not showing the bad, then you're sure as hell ain't good. I mean, that's a lot of money you guys are spending. And I don't mean, I, I respect you. ROTC judge, you know, Larry. All of us, I can throw names out there, you don't even know me, but we see you just like you see us. As far as the internet, 
if it was for our, I, we had a kid at city council last night that stood up and just blew them all away yeah. because he had seen what Art had done. Yeah. I hate Art. Don't I hate you, Art? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He does. Yeah, he does. <laughs> but you know what I love about Art? He don't talk without something in his hand. Yeah. I'm going to talk without nothing like that. I'm living. So understand something. You got someone like him and her, pastors and reverends and, and the police. And we're all looking at the police, which I love even more. What I'm saying is this. When you see us, you see Flint, and you guys were a part of it. Don't forget where you came from. We're watching you now. Anyone else? Raise children, buy a home up north, 
have a snowmobile, have a boat. But to a large extent, that opportunity is gone. And now, you guys are the educational stewards over this town. Yeah. And in particular, over Flint. And so you have to be instruments in giving hope once again and helping to show the way as educational stewards because too much is given. Much. My name is Bishop Bernard Bell Jefferson, address 2814 Lewis Street, City of Flint, zip code 48506. And I'm here not only as a parent, but a community leader. And when I stand, I stand not only just for one person and one family, I stand for a congregation, I stand for a community. And when I actually hear what's being said in an open meeting mm, that's right. mm. to get an understanding mm -hmm. so that we can relate and operate in wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. That's the only reason why. If I hadn't been interested to bring change and help to our community, then if we wouldn't have showed up. But this is a group that's in an open meeting in order to get an understanding. Not just making noise and sounding off, but to get an understanding. And I'd be happy to sit there and do that with you. I'm just trying to get that information tonight. Well, I also come because I watched the movie or the film about Miriam Kramer, the school. Miriam Cross. Miriam Cross. <clears throat> that I've been working with them for the last six years. I have an African drum and dance group that we go and perform every February. And then once we perform in February, they went and bought drums so the children could participate. And my youth went back every year to work with them. She said that we were the first ones <coughs> that had open participation with the children. Not because my children are handicapped, but because I love my people. I love my community. I love my city. I love this county. And so whatever hurts or hinders this county, I'm here to help and make a difference. Have I been to Washington? Yes. Have I been to Lansing? Yes. Have I been to Detroit? Yes. Have I been all over the United States fighting for Flint? Fighting for Genesee County? Your children and my children. Your people and my people. And so we fight to make change. But if we don't get an understanding, if we don't be knowledgeable about what we're speaking about, it's kind of hard to fight. And so therefore, <clears throat> A few years ago, in 2010, the Board of Education encouraged the school district, sent out a memo that if we can lure the children from Flint or get them to come out here and closing the schools and, and, and keeping the education from them, not only will we get their money, but an extra thousand dollars. So much of the money has been taken from the city of Flint to put in the suburbs of the out county school <laughs> to bring change. And so what we want, we talked about the forming, the reason why I'm coming out brought up uh, the school in Flushing is that it ain't that you don't know what we need. It's not that you don't know what it would take to bring change to our children for special education. But you don't want to apply it that it will bring a whole community. If half of us broke, all of us is broke. One of us broke, all of us broke. Because see, you might not be living next door to us today, but tomorrow is coming. Is anyone else wish to address the board? Could you please state your name and address for the record? Good evening. 
My name is Trishelle Young. I live at 1612 Crescent Drive. I was born and raised as a resident in Flint, Michigan. I'm actually happy to see several faces that I recognize, Judge Conover, Mr. Avery, Mr. Ford, reasonable-minded people, which I'm very happy to see. I, I don't know. <laughs> so it's possible. But I'm glad to hear that. Thank you. Because I don't really understand why the board seems reluctant to reconsider looking at a distribution formula that seems to be clearly outdated. It's a formula that I understand was adopted almost 20 years ago, which is nothing like society is today. So, and I looked at the chart that you all showed earlier, and it showed your special needs population has really been on a steady decline for the past 10 years. Flint's special needs population has more than doubled. So how can you use a formula that was adopted 20 years ago when the numbers are not the same. I heard Dr. Turncliffe indicate that back when it was adopted that several superintendents supported it and several principals supported it. I would like to see this board at a minimum establish a committee and have them look at these numbers, look at the data, and report back not only to the board but to us to justify how you can continue using a formula that's outdated. Mm -hmm. As an attorney, I talk with parents and I represent youth that have been kicked out of school, mm -hmm. thrown into the criminal justice system, mm -hmm. and all the system does is chew them up and spit them back out. That's right. If we don't use this money that's intended to help these kids now, you're gonna be dealing with them later on a different level. Mm -hmm. You are fueling the school to prison pipeline yes. by not addressing these kids now. That's all we're asking you to do. It's be fair. Be fair and this money is intended for the kids that need it. You cannot say these Flint kids don't need this money. Just give them their fair share. They're not asking for you to give up something so they can get more. We just want their fair share. And we don't think that that's too much to ask. And I would really like to hear from the board members on what your intentions are and why you're defending a formula that nobody can understand is current or relevant to today's society of youth and what they're dealing with. You know the lead impact. We don't know what the extent of their injuries and the harm are. We don't know what the behavioral issues are gonna be. We don't know when they're gonna exhibit these issues. And we don't know in what fashion or to what degree they're gonna be exhibited. We have to get to them now. We have to do it. You have no choice. As Bishop Jefferson said, you're gonna see these kids one day, one place or another. So we are asking and imploring you to do the right thing. Do what's fair and help the kids that need it the most. That's why you're where you are, is to help these kids. And that's all we want you to do. Thank you. I can't hear what you're saying. Somebody might explain to her how F-18 works, though. I think works. You know, you know. We got it. I'm going to tell you. Well, as far as authority is concerned, uh, it's the superintendents that make that, um, that yeah, it's, I think there's missing. Uh, so I'm saying that this board doesn't have the authority, but the superintendents of each, each district. So we don't have a say as far as the uh, result. But uh, yeah, I just want to make sure you do that. We We're, can't trump the 21 superintendents. Why are you but, 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 <laughs> listen, but we've authorized our superintendent to speak to those other superintendents. We're supporting her and her quest to talk to them. They ultimately have to get off the dime one way or another. And hopefully that will be soon. So then at, at one point in time, she will have something concrete to bring back to us and or to you. In the meantime, we have to let this thing work through its system. Now, I know that's frustrating. I understand that. Now, don't shake your head. I understand it. I've been around a long time, brother. You know that. I know how frustrating it is. We just, we just heard about the formula 
inequity as you're putting it. We need them to understand that. We think they should take a look at it. We've authorized her to, to lead on that. Give us a break and let us do it. And, and, and the danger to that, I, I would say, is what I said earlier, is when we talk about the, our, our counties, who are the superintendents, who three generations later moved from us, we talking about the ideology. That's why the formula is dangerous. And why would they want to change it? What does racism look like? Can we look at it? So, so we we're not open to discussion. We, we all would get you like to understand your name and address? For the record. Are you the... They are. Yes. Please adjust the name and address. Okay, my name is Claire McClinton. And today is February 11th, <coughs> the anniversary of the Flint sit-down. a nod to people who wouldn't accept being second class citizens, who fought to become middle class people, who understood that they made General Motors rich. General Motors didn't give them. They fought for what they thought was a fair day's pay for a fair day's work. And so isn't it interesting that history has put us up here on February 11th to fight for quality education. Not just that it's unequal and abusive to the, those who in the greatest need. That's immoral that we got to sit up here and fight for that in 2020. But keep dragging around with your committees and your this and your that and, and everything else because guess what? Through these, the path that we're going on, if you don't want to change the formula, Bessie the boss will. If you believe in public education, you have to put the children first. And I would like to, all of you to take a look at and the, I don't know Dr. Hagel, but your character reminds me of Gina McCarthy at the EPA when we went down there and said, fix our water. And they said, well, this one was the governor, the this, the that, the, the Michigan <coughs> and the this and that, the other. The reports that you are giving, this is what's astounding. The reports that you are giving, you never injected water crisis in the report. No. Excuse me, did somebody tell y'all we had a tsunami in one of the districts? Was that a conversation? Why did we have to bring that? You just put, uh, you just went on auto autopilot and used the formula. Oh, forget about it, it's a tsunami, it's a hurricane, it's a climate change, the whole the flint then got devastated and wiped out, and you just keep the formula, just keep on rolling. That's the, that's the unconscionable part. Because the formula should have said, somebody should have said, wait a minute, just like Gina McCarthy should have said, just the doggone minute. You don't have no what? But that is the failure on the part of leadership. And you can say she deals with the superintendent, but you all are all responsible. Don't pass that on. You all need to step up and get this thing fixed. Because not only do we need our children in special ed attended to, but we need to try to save Flint Community Schools, everybody. This is the road down to this dissolution of our education system in the city of Flint. And we are not going to accept that just like they didn't accept it in 1937. Thank you very much. When Dr. Eagle was asked about the lawsuit, she'd been working with the Flint superintendent and the letter had to go to the State Department of Education. We have nothing to do with the formula that's set by the state of Michigan, and we have to deal with it. If you want to deal with it, then all of you go to the state of Michigan and start this with them. 
Not with us, because we have no we control. You go to the no. state of Michigan. We you are sitting on the doggone board. We already have. You need to go to the state. Don't tell us where to go. <laughs> My name is Janice A.O. Muhammad. I live in 909 Waker Avenue, Flint. I was born and brought up in Flint. I remember when I was very young, we couldn't cross Saginaw Street and go on the west side. There was so much bigotry and racism going on. If you did cross over there and you were black, you had to have a note like a little child from your employees that, that, that you were cleaning their house or whatever else that you were doing to allow you to be in that area. I want to give you a slight history, and then I'll give you the present and a little bit of the future in four minutes. One, when you have a people that has gone through, that has gone through a lot of tyranny and injustice, and you have a bunch of bigots in front of you or people that call themselves your guy, your uh, savior, your king, your emperor, whomever, that is not treating you justly and giving you ill will, beating you, hanging you, cutting your throat, calling you nigga, calling you a gal, calling you a boy, calling you out of your name, and then you have people the whole walk of life across the board that has been done to. And it's only been done to by a one type of people. I said type. Mm -hmm. Those types of people think that they're better than everybody That's else. Right. They deserve to be on the top. Okay, fine. But then the people that are on the bottom, is that bottom rung that is going to be at the top? The question is not, are you going to do, treat us justly? Or are you going to treat everybody justly? No, that's not the question. The question is, is when are we going to get the hell up and get our own? That's the question. It's going to happen. Not that we're going to have a civil <coughs> war, but there will be one. Not with us, but with your brothers. The brother will come up against you because you didn't show him how to get the riches that you have. I'm saying you metaphorically. If the word you fit, take it. Now, present. People are getting so exhausted and frustrated and they are back in a corner right now because now you're dealing with the babies, okay? That's not gonna keep happening. They're gonna come out of that corner, but before they do, scripture has it that somebody else is gonna come along, someone else is gonna come along and take it from those that think that they are the ultimate power and give it to the bottom room. Okay? You can redeem yourself by putting on sackcloth. You do have a responsibility. You better find out exactly what it is and do it if you want to redeem, redeem yourself. You have the voice of the people. You have that voice. Use it. Use it for good. Would any of you sacrifice anything that you have in your home to help the lower people? Oh, hell no. 
you're not going to do it, you feel very comfortable in the seat that you're in. Mm -hmm. Don't. Because that seat is going to be on fire in a minute. <laughs> in a short minute. Look at history, biblical history. Every time a people are downtrodden, they always, always come back up. Here they come back up. We are the worst people on this earth because we was treated worse than anybody else that ever fought this planet. You can say Jews were. That is not the truth. They still have their history. They still have their language. They still have their culture. They still have their pride. But the children of the people that chose to survive, I'm one of them, you hear me? I'm one of those children. I'm one of the children that of the child of the persons that chose to survive. We chose to survive. We went through holy moly hell. We went through slavery. And now look at we're still in slavery. Mentally, you just took the shackles off. Let us go to another country for a couple of months. You won't come get us. I'm talking about your brothers. I'm talking about people that you can go to and talk to, but guess what? You don't have to, because we're going to end up having this all to ourselves. We will. We'll end up having this all to ourselves. Not that we have to take it from you. It's going to be good. I hope that you listen to everybody here because see we only have five minutes of peace which I agree with whomever it was that said five minutes don't give you no time to say anything and I know you can't sit here all night but you could try because we could you know, we could stay here all night and talk to you and, and, and try to get information or give you information so that you could go to the right people with that information, but don't look for the for a, a, please don't look for a, a fix here. Mm -hmm. It's not gonna happen. The question is, when are we gonna start <coughs> looking at getting our own and getting the hell out of here? No, no, no. You pay tax. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you don't pay with your life, my brother. You don't pay with your life. But it's time now to get our own. It's time to get our own. It's going to be difficult to get our own. I'm going to keep talking to somebody. This has to make me shut up. I have more to say, but I feel like everyone basically said everything on my page, so we don't need to put it in I know there's the word racism keeps coming up a lot. And I wanted to say Mr. Avery is on the board and he hasn't said anything about racism, so that kind of threw me for a loop because I feel like he would have said something about it. Um, I know there's y'all presentation, there was a lot of positives when somebody else said that there was a lot of positive. Y'all showed nothing negative when y'all did y'all presentation. So it's evident that y'all good. Um, it's evident that everybody here, we're speaking of negative. So it's clear that everybody's on the same page. Y'all good, we not. Um, what else did I have? I want to say the kids in plant, all of our kids are, I'm not going to say all of them, a lot of our kids have behavior issues. I don't, I don't really want to say they're special needs, but that's what everyone's labeling. I want to say these kids have these behavior issues because of the water. If you look at the um, side effects from the lead, it will cause you to be angry. And these special needs are because they're angry. These kids are fighting. Um, as adults, I would say everyone in this crowd, we're angry, we're frustrated. As adults, we can come and talk to y'all because we're, we're adults. We, we're angry, we can voice our anger. As a child, you can't do that. You can't mentally grasp that. So what do they do? They fight. They cuss out their teacher. They yell. They throw things. They kick. They scream. So what they're doing in Flint schools, they're fighting, and people are kicking them out. Attorney um, Trish, 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 Trish,
She stated that all the schools are doing is kicking them out so they can go to jail. That's what's happening. I read somewhere where kids get kicked out of third grade, their literacy rate is still in their bed for jail or something. I don't know. I don't do my research like this one here. I'm just going by hearsay. But we're kicking our kids out because they have behavior problems. I'm saying if if everybody was doing their job right, if y'all was doing your job right, you think you would have came at you for your salary? You wouldn't even say nothing about your salary. If everybody was doing their job right, they wouldn't even bring it up. So if y'all was taking care of all of the kids, because I'm an active volunteer. I, I have four children, two of them in the test schools and two of them in GISD. I am a volunteer volunteer. If I didn't have a job, I would work for Flint schools and GISD. But I can't because I have to pay bills. And based on the salary thing, I don't want to make $10 an hour. <laughs> um, Y'all are doing an amazing job for Flint schools when it comes to children zero to five.